Not all hoarders have mental illness. Now, I want to say this because I just got out of a meeting where somebody said, I don't clean houses at all for hoarders because they have mental illnesses. And they made this blanket statement that was completely inaccurate and it made me really mad. So I wanted to stop for just a second and I wanted to clarify some of the misunderstandings that we have surrounding hoarding. Now, I've been privileged to be a house cleaner inside people's homes for about 30 years. And I've dealt with all different kinds of families at all different stages of their lives. And there were people that were not hoarders at one point, and then they became hoarders. And I'm going to share with you that not all hoarders have mental illness. Now, I want to stop for a second and make a disclaimer that I am not qualified to diagnose someone as a hoarder or as having a mental illness. What I am qualified to do is clean. And so on the front line, inside people's homes, lots of different types of people's homes, here is my experience. And I want you to understand so that you then have an option of either changing your belief system or being more open-minded when you come in, in contact or you live around a hoarder. There are several industries that hire people and those industries lend themselves to hoarding. And I say this because the careers consume so much time and so much energy that the people do not have time to deal with their own personal lives. So for example, um, really big into the court cases. These are lawyers, these are judges, these are people who have these professional lives, but they're dealing all day with briefs. They're dealing with legal documents and they're dealing with contacting customers and interviewing people. And then they go to court and they present their cases. Then they go home and they take more paperwork and they have all this stuff that they do. So they bring a lot of work home. So it's not uncommon for them to have just gobs of boxes and paper and stuff in their office. All right, well, what that does is that creates a norm in their home. And so it's not unusual to have another room of their house that has lots of clothes or lots of dishes or whatever, okay? And it's not that they don't want to clean. It's that all of their energy from sunup until sundown is spent serving other people. And so there's a tendency in that profession to create hoarders. And there's no, there's no mental illness about that at all. What that is, is I got up at four o'clock in the morning. I had to be at work at 530. I was working all day. I was in court all day. I brought paperwork home with me. And at 11 o'clock at night, they finally decided to clock out for the day, go grab something to eat and go to bed. There's no time for them to do laundry and dishes and, you know, organize their little cubby and make it look like a Pinterest space or any of those things. School teachers are another one. We've had large numbers of school teachers, even in the same school system, that have hired my company over the years. And they didn't start out necessarily as hoarders, but they became it over the years because also their days start at 4 30, 5 o'clock in the morning. They go to school, they're teaching classes all day, they bring home all the papers they've got to grade that night. When the grading is over, and I've been at people's houses <laughs> cleaning at 8 o'clock at night, the school teachers will let you come and work very late because they stay up until midnight preparing tomorrow's presentations and tomorrow's classes, there's no time for them to clean. And then if you have an elder parent that moves in with you and you are expected to take care of them because of resources or what have you, then what you have is you have an elder parent that moved in and in order to make them comfortable, if they moved into an already furnished home and then the parent brought all of their furnishings and all of their extra stuff, you now have a normal home that has like two sets of everything. And so it's over cluttered and over chaotic. And then when you go to put stuff away, there are boxes in the way. And it's not that you wanted boxes in the way. It's just that your mother just came to live with you. And so her boxes are in the way. And sometimes a sweater will get tossed over the top of those boxes, or the dinner plate will get left on the top of those boxes on the way to the kitchen. And so it just builds up day after day. And it's not that anybody wanted to be a hoarder. It's just that in caring for the mother, but also running the career, trying to get enough money to pay for what's happening in the house and to pay for the bills that the family owes, creates a hoarding situation. So it is perfectly normal that doctors and lawyers and nurses and accountants and school teachers and dentists have these lifestyles where they're gone all day and they're serving other people. Then they bring work home with them and they end up working till the wee hours of the night or the morning. And then they get up the next day and they rinse and repeat that same cycle. The home is not the priority. That's why they hire house cleaners. But it is very easy if you don't pay very close attention for a little mouse to come in and sneak in under something. Mice can climb into anyone's home. And if you don't catch the first one that comes in, they can breed and they can have two or three or five mice. And before you know it, you have a few mice in the house and like, eh, there's this huge issue, right? It's not 
that there's someone living there with a mental illness. It's that there's someone there desperately trying to survive, keep the family, you know, bills paid and what have you, keep the job afloat, serve the people that they're serving on a day-to-day -day basis, and then still come home at night and hope that there's some survival when they get home. There are very creative people that are hoarders or have hoarding tendencies. And there are some who have a mental illness, but not all of them do. And so if you find someone in your life who is a hoarder or they have hoarding tendencies, and it could just be that they hoard one thing, maybe they just hoard books or they just hoard arts and crafts or they just hoard electronics or they just hoard wood because they might be a, a construction worker and they keep pieces of overage that were in a dumpster, but they're still good pieces of wood. They might just be creative people that they're going to make a little special project on the side that they don't get around to because they're busy, right? So there are people that hoard particular things and then there are people that just hoard everything. So there are different levels and different varying stages, but I really want for us to just stop if we see a hoarder or if we have a hoarder in our life and not just say, oh, that person has a mental illness and be afraid of them because we don't understand the situation that they're in. Nothing wrong with asking for help. As it turns out, we all need help. We all need help on different areas of our lives, right? So if you run into somebody that scares you a little bit, don't be afraid. These are regular people that just need an extra set of hands and they need some understanding and they need love and care just like all of us, okay? We are all equal when it comes to our emotions and our needs and our wanting to be accepted and loved and all these things. Some of us just happen to have elder parents living with us with all of their stuff. Or there are people who did not, they were never hoarders ever at all. And then their parents who collected things passed away and left them a house and a storage unit and a shed and extra things. And then because they had to sell the house, they brought some of the belongings home. Now they still have two sets of everything. And oftentimes those people still have jobs and they're working or they're raising grandkids or they're doing whatever that again is serving other people. And clearing out drawers and old dressers and stuff like that, it's just not a priority. It's not on anyone's priority list. That doesn't make them a bad person and it certainly doesn't make them have a mental illness. All right, listen, we do have a group. It's called Hoarding World. You do not have to be a hoarder to participate. You can come over and join us and help us as we help other people change their relationship with stuff. Some of these are people who are working with family members who, again, they're trying to understand the nuances of what's happening. Some of them are people working through their own issues. So you do not have to be a hoarder, but you are welcome. It is a safe place and we would love for you to join us. I'm going to leave links in the show notes. Until then, please be kind and please be understanding and please be open-minded. And until we meet again, leave the world a cleaner place than when you found it.